I'm gonna read out the situation. It's pretty brief actually. And then I'll reread it and we'll note down the important information again. So just pens down for a minute and just listen with your full attention. We're in a light bulb factory. Okay, we're in a light bulb factory. The probability of a light bulb being defective is 5%. The probability reduces to 3% when the manager is working, when the manager's like wandering around. It's like, that makes sense. It's like, <laughs> work hard, okay? They're, they're watching me, okay? The manager's not always on duty all the time. They're on duty 65% of the time. Okay, I'll read it again, and you stop me when you get a bit of information you wanna write down, okay? The probability of a light bulb being defective is 5%. You should have stopped me. <laughs> um, we've got the probability of, how would you write this? Defective, that'll do. Probability of something being defective equals, and I think we said, 5%, great, happy times. And then it says, the probability reduces to 3% when the manager is working. Now that word, when, when, is a bit like, oh, it's over here. It's, it's this, right? I know this, this is a condition, okay? So the probability of it being defective, still the same favorable event, as it were, when, on the condition that, yeah, we'll just call it manager. Equals, it reduces down, 3%. But the manager's not always there, right? So I can say the probability of the manager being on duty, so we'll just call that probability of the manager. We said that was 65%. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask you to draw a tree diagram that represents this. We used a Venn diagram here. The reason why a Venn diagram is going to be less useful for us over here is because this is one of those situations we mentioned where you can't just count up the number of students there are. We have no idea how many light bulbs this factory is making, right? But we can deal with the probabilities. A tree diagram is going to be more helpful. So I'm going to leave it to you for a minute to have a think about how would you represent all of this information? And there's actually more information that you can sort of infer. I mean, I'll give you an obvious one, right? What's the probability that the thing is not defective? 95%. So there's more information you can work out pretty easily that's gonna go onto this tree diagram. What's the probability of there not being a manager there? Have a think about how you draw the tree. There's more than one way to do it, but there are easier and harder ways. I'll give you a couple minutes. All right, are you ready for me to interrupt your thinking? or interrupt your potential inability to think and like, I'm not sure what to do here, okay? Um, looking around the room, I saw a variety of different tree diagrams. Like I said, there's more than one way to do this, but there are ways that are more helpful and ways that are less helpful, okay? So, I've got here a tree diagram that represents the two stages that I'm thinking about, right? Now, the way that I knew to draw two stages was, I can think of two different things that are happening and I can sort of separate them out, right? Now, whether you think about one as the first, one as the second, this is the part where it starts to get a bit trickier. So, which makes more sense to be the first thing? Can I get a suggestion? Yeah. I want to put manager as first. I don't have to, but it is a bit easier to think about. Um, I'm putting the manager here. We could say no manager, but we also have some notation. When you say the opposite of the thing, we have a special word for that in probability. The opposite, it's the say it again, the complement. So we can use this notation to indicate the complement. We just take whatever that thing is, and then we put a bar over it. Yeah, put a line over it. There we go. So that means the complement of the manager being there, no manager, OK? Now, the reason why I think this makes sense to put first is because you can always see whether this is happening, whether, whereas the defect in the light bulb, if there is one or not, that's like a more difficult thing that happens later. And it literally does happen later. The manager's there or not there, and then the things get built, okay? So then over here, this is pretty easy. There's either a defect or there is not a defect, yeah? And it can happen both ways in both situations. So down here, I also have a defect or... No defect. And of course, if you prefer, you're more than welcome to just write the names there. You could just say, oh, it's good, <laughs> right? So long as you know what the, Venn what the tree diagram means, the language is more important in terms of clear communication. Okay, now let's take the information in the question and start to put it onto the tree. What's the chance the manager? You can just read this off. 65. 65. So given that this is the complement, you work it out by doing 
100 take away that, which of course you already know, 35. Happy times. And then coming over to this side, some of this information, like let's work out where the 5 and the 3 are. Where do they go on here? So up here, up here. So this is uh, the probability of a defect if the manager is there. So I'm on the top branch. So that's 3, which gives me what down here? 97. And then down here, when the manager is not around, this is the original situation, right? 5 and 95. Great. OK, so come and have a look here. Here are some questions for us to tackle, right? And they're both sort of conditional. Have a think about it. If the manager's on duty, if the manager's on duty, that word if is another way that you can see a condition, right? So this is like the word when or on the condition that. So here's, here's us trying to decode the question, right? What's the probability of a defect? So some of you are like, wait a second, the question just told me, right? Like it already just stated this. That's absolutely right. We're going to confirm that in a second. But I just want us to see how, I want to prove how this before, which we can use, we're going to need to use in the next situation. They don't just tell us what the answer is. How this can help us, right? If I think about the probability of a defect, so I'll write it like this, given that there's a manager. I know that I already wrote this a second ago when I was writing the question. But think about how I would phrase it in terms of this, right? What's the probability of the denominator? Have a think. 65. It's 65, right? Because that's the probability of the manager being there. We already stated that. So this is just going to be 65%. That's the probability of B. Up the top here, I have the probability of A and B happening together. So that's 65% times 3%. This is that cancelling thing that I mentioned before, right? You're like, oh, of course it's just 3%. It's like I forget that this whole thing even exists, and this becomes my 100%. I'm just imagining this universe. This is my reduced sample space. You following? OK, so it's just 